Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to build an Arduino remote control car using the NRF 24L01 wireless transceiver module. I guess you could call this video a step-by-step -step how to build and control an Arduino RC car. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Let me just start off by showing you my remote control. Uh, what I did was I just took a piece of 3mm uh, ply craft is what they call this, or craft board, uh, hobby board is what I call it. And I hot glued, just on the corners here, um, this module right here, this joystick module that I got in the Elegy Mega uh, kit a couple years ago. But you can buy these uh, joysticks online. They're fairly cheap. And I hot glued the corner of the plastic base of my Arduino Uno on here as well. And it's pretty easy to, to pry up, uh, not too much trouble, uh, just as long as you don't overdo it with hot glue. Here's the transceiver that I connected to the Arduino for my uh, remote control and I power it with a 9 volt battery. Now this is an old battery, it's kind of small. It's a 250 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride uh, battery. But anyway, I connect it to the barrel jack with this adapter here and you can buy these online as well, a whole bunch of them for a fairly cheap price. Uh, I might have got this one in the uh, Elegoo Mega kit as well. I tend to keep using stuff from that kit. It came in handy. So that is my remote control. Well, let me show you my car. Here is the car, and so you're going to have to buy the chassis, or you can build one yourself. And the chassis comes with a couple motors here, one on each side. Comes with the tires and then the plastic base. Uh, what I did previously was um, I glued, <laughs> I hot glue everything. I glued this um, breadboard on the front here, and it actually worked out pretty well, so I just left it. But when I don't need it anymore, I'll just pry it off, and it'll come off, come off pretty easy. So back here I have the uh, I have a motor driver that I've used multiple times and this motor driver right here I've used a number of times in different videos. It is the L298N motor driver and I like it because you can connect uh, both of these motors to it which is what I've done here on both sides and uh, I connect it to the uh, Arduino Uno which I have Arduino Uno here as well and this one is not glued to the breadboard it is just rubber banded here. It's got a rubber band holding it in place Here's my transceiver for the uh, the car sitting right here, and it's uh, attached with a rubber band as well. And uh, I have another battery right here. Now this is a lithium-ion battery, which gives it a little more go for the motors and uh, lasts a little bit longer. This is an 850 milliwatt hour uh, battery. It's lithium-ion, so remember to be careful with lithium-ion batteries. 850 milliamp hour. Actually, I bought these off Amazon. And I, I really like them. It, you just put it in here, charge it up. It doesn't take too long at all. And they do last a good amount of time. Uh, but mm, <laughs> there's no battery that really lasts a long time uh, when it comes to uh, running motors. But this one does a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy with it. I got it on Amazon. So um, I'll link it in the description below. But uh, yeah, so I have a mini breadboard right here. And it is uh, hot glued as well to the chassis. And I'm not using my little switch right here. I found that uh, a little cumbersome to, to get to. So I'm not using my switch for this one. And uh, I'm using another 9-volt adapter to power my Arduino Uno. Uh, this is a 9-volt adapter. So all in all, you don't need a whole lot for this project. Um, you also need some male-to-male -male and male-to-female jumper wires. But uh, other than that, it's not a whole lot to it. Well, here is the NRF 24L01 module. And this is very popular as a wireless communication module with uh, DIY projects and IoT applications. It operates on the 2.4 uh, gigahertz frequency, and it gives it very reliable and low power communication over short to medium distances. It all really depends on how much you have obstructing the uh, the signal from your your transceiver. Um, this module provides a straightforward and easy interface with microcontrollers like your Arduino and your Raspberry Pi. And we'll see that in just a minute as we go over the wiring for this project. But uh, it's very robust and very affordable. Uh, today on Amazon, I see that you can buy 12 of these if you need 12 for $15. That's really not a bad price. And uh, it makes it great for applications like remote control systems, uh, sensor networks, wireless data logging. So you may see another video uh, with this uh, transceiver here. I really enjoy the wireless projects. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the wiring for this project. 
I'm trying something new here to show you the wiring. I didn't want to draw the wires to the Arduino just because it gets kind of convoluted and, and busy. So here I've color coded each of the components and the colors over here match that component. So what I'm saying is that the transceiver here is red. All the numbers over here that are red correspond with these pins. So uh, for instance, the uh, number one pin here on the transceiver is the three volt pin. And you'll see that down here on the Arduino 3V3 pin. And uh, the, the pin number two is the ground pin. And you'll see that on ground and then so forth all the way up to pin 7. I've done the same with the joystick. All those are in uh, yellow. And I've numbered them in case you have a hard time seeing color. So pin number 8 is the y-axis pin and that corresponds to A1. And then um, likewise for all the other yellow numbers over here. And then of course you've got the 9 volt battery. Now we'll switch over to the receiver or the uh, what would be on your car or what's receiving the signal and we have again red numbers indicating the transceiver so uh, one two three four five six seven correspond with the pins that they would go in over here remember to plug this into a three volt pin don't put it in five volt you may uh, destroy it so three volt up here ground right here and then uh, the other ones right here i did the same thing with the um, motor driver here they're all in yellow and they're all right here on the digital side as you can see the number eight here is ENA and the number 13 is ENB then enable B and enable A on the picture they have the uh, jumper on them so remove that and uh, put your wire on that uh, that pin there so just to be clear and then I also put the uh, 9 volt battery right in the middle of my mini breadboard and then I powered the uh, Arduino through the VIN pin with 9 volts and the uh, motor driver with 9 volts. And then, of course, here is the ground connection from the, uh, the battery and the, the motor driver. And it connects to the ground on the Arduino. I did the motors separately just so it wouldn't get too crowded on that page. And uh, the motors, I have them attached I have the wires attached at the same location on the motors. I just swap them at the screw terminal right here, as you can see. And the motors will be right here if you bought the same chassis I did. They're right uh, next to the wheels. There are two sketches for this project. One is the receiver sketch here. And you'll see another one, the transmitter sketch. We'll go over the receiver first. Uh, for this one, we're using two libraries, the SPI and the RF24. We uh, create an instance of the RF24 class called Radio, and it's created here with the CE pin connected to the digital pin 9, and the CSN pin connected to digital pin 10. Now there's also a, uh, here's a pipe address right here. This establishes connection between the two uh, modules, and they do need to be identical. If this is not the same for the receiver and the transmit, uh, sketch then you will not make a connection and down here we define the motor and the enable pins of our motor driver in the setup portion the RF24 module is initialized using the radio.begin function a reading pipe is opened using radio.open reading pipe this sets the address for receiving data from the RF24 module the radio is set to start listening for incoming data using radio.startListening and down here we have the motor pins and enable pins that are configured as outputs using pin mode. And then we set up our serial we set up our serial monitor right here. In the loop portion, it first checks to see if there in there's any data available to receive from the RF24 module using radio.available function. If data is available, it reads the data into an array called data using radio.read. The received values of the X and Y axis of the joystick are stored in variables X and Y, respectively. The joystick's Y axis value, Y, is mapped to a range of minus 255 to 255, which that represents the motor speed range. Based on the X axis value, X, the turning motor speed is calculated, and these speeds are adjusted by adding or subtracting a fraction of the X axis value. The motor speeds are constrained to ensure that they are within the valid range of minus 255 to 255. 
The motor directions are determined based on the sign of the motor speeds. The appropriate motor control pins IN1, IN2, IN3, and IN4 are set to control the direction of each motor. And the motor speeds are set using the analog right to the enable pins, enable A and enable B. Those are located on our uh, motor driver. And uh, those control the motor speeds through pulse width modulation signals. And finally, the serial dot print statements are used to output the values of x-axis, y-axis, left motor speed, and right motor speed for debugging purposes. The code utilizes the RF24 library to establish wireless communication between the Arduino and the NRF24L01 module. The RF24 module is configured to receive data using a specific pipe address that we saw earlier, and that is known as the pipe constant. Let's go ahead and take a look at the transmitter sketch. This is the second sketch for this project, and this is the transmit sketch. And we see the same uh, libraries here being used. All this is the same as the uh, receive sketch, the receiver sketch. So, and, and remember right here that the pipe address is the same. You want to make sure that's the same. And because if that's off, it's going to throw you off. So we'll just start right down here with the joystick pins. The joystick pins are defined as constants. As you can see here, the joystick uh, X is connected to analog pin A0, and joystick Y is connected to analog pin A1. And the setup function is executed once at the start of the program, and it initializes the RF24 module using radio.begin. It opens the writing pipe using radio.openWritingPipe with the uh, defined pipe address. And the joystick pins are set as inputs using pin mode. The serial communication is started at a baud rate of 9600, so you can access your serial monitor to debug if necessary. And finally, we have the loop section here. The loop is pretty simple in this one. Inside the loop, it reads the analog values from the joystick x-axis and the y-axis using analog read, and it assigns them to variables x and y. An integer array data is created to store the values of x and y, the data array is transmitted wirelessly using radio.write. The size of function is used to determine the size of the data array. And the serial communication is used to print the values of X and, and Y, the uh, X axis and Y axis for debugging purposes if necessary. And then down at the bottom you see a delay of 50 milliseconds and that's just introduced between each transmission. Well, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, be sure to like it by giving it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe and click the bell notification button and share with anyone and everyone. I'll see you again very soon.